When you are not perturbed by the grievances of other people and when you are standing on your own square and there is no irritation that you have in your spirit, you are moving in the domain of clarity and you are operating from a place of good intentions, there are going to be a lot of people that you're going to have to leave behind. And it's not necessarily because we want to leave these people behind. It's because sometimes having to walk away is the only thing that we can do to really move forward in the situation. It's not fair for you to have to limit yourself to be around people that are not even really on your level, okay? And it's not to say that these people are bad people. Some of the people that you have to leave behind are not bad people. They're just not people that are aligned with what you're looking for in your spirit and what you're looking to accomplish in this life. And that's okay. Now, before I go any further, some of you may be wondering why I've got a guitar here. And if you stay tuned in to the end of the video, I'm going to do a rendition of Wish You, Wish you Were Here by Pink Floyd. And I want to dedicate that to all of the people that I've either seen in my life over the past six years or so that are no longer here, that are not with me on my journey anymore, or just gone altogether, meaning they're somewhere else now. And they are either dead and they are, and I, I don't mean to say like, yeah, they're dead, like, <laughs> but it is the case. Some of the people are spiritually dead. And even though they're alive, they're walking like zombies. And sometimes the best thing that you have to do is just leave them behind. Sometimes the only thing you can do is leave them behind. And so when I say leave them behind, I mean to do this with wisdom. I don't mean to do this or say this just to, just to do it. Okay, I don't encourage anybody to just leave people stranded because if they, let's, let it, let's put it like this, right? They isolated you. Some of these people isolated you and you have no choice but to leave them. So you decided to rise up. You decided to refuse to see losing as an option. You decided to see greatness as the only option. You decided to see success, whatever that looks like and whatever your definition of staggering success looks like to you is, that's what you decided to pursue. You decided that it was time to see behind the, the, the Wizard of Oz curtain, right? You, you wanted to look through and see what exactly is on the other side. Because this sure doesn't seem like anything like we were told it was supposed to be. This sure doesn't seem like anything that it, it is like what it actually is. It, it, all of these things seem bizarre. All of these things that are going on in this life seem crazy. And things are just not making sense. People are not making sense. And when you try to be there for them, you try to show empathy, you try to show compassion. It's like you're treated with contempt. And why would you want to stick around like that? And then the craziest thing is sometimes when you do show compassion, when you do show caring, it's like they see that and they think to themselves, oh, I got him now or I got her now. And it's like, no, you, you don't got me. You don't. You got it. You got things, but you don't have people. And you sure as hell don't have yourself. So these kinds of people, even if it's family, even if it's friends, you're going to have to leave behind. And there's going to be times where you don't want to do that. There are going to be times where it's going to be necessary for you to actually see beyond that that veil, that facade that is being put forward and see beyond what is being projected onto the screen. And I mean that metaphorically as well as physically, because even here with me, I encourage you guys to take what I say with a grain of salt, you know, take what I say sincerely, but I, I want you guys to think about what I have to say and come to your own conclusions. And it's so funny because the people that I see that actually have individualized thought, because I consider myself a leader of individualized thought, 
And what I mean by that is just, I'm someone that thinks for myself. I'm somebody that actually takes openness and all of the different ideas into consideration, but I don't let my brain fall out. <laughs> I don't let my brain spill over the table or over the carpet. Like a lot of people, I think what what sets a lot of the truly godly people apart from anybody else in the world is that they show compassion and openness without sacrificing who they are. And if you're somebody that can show compassion and openness without sacrificing who you are, it's like you suddenly have this amazing superpower that not a lot of people have. And the only way to have people see that superpower is to realize what they had when it was actually there and you're gone. Sometimes, sometimes that's the only way. Sometimes it's the only way that you're going to get anywhere, anywhere with, with people is going to be when you finally decide to break off and to be your own purpose and be your own person and live your own life. Then they realize what they lost. Then they realize like, oh shoot, my demons are actually more agitated with them gone. And they may not say it in those so many words, but they realize that you calmed their demons. You, your empathy and your light Remember, you're not the light, but you are a bearer of light. The light of Christ was, is within you, but you are not the light of Christ. And so we are, we are like candles that are being lit by the light of Christ. And when you have the light of Christ, you're able to light other candles around you that are not lit. Okay? That's the best way to think about it. And that's one of the reasons why so many people are going to try to take advantage of you. So many people are going to try to manipulate you and to do things that they want you to do. But if you see through the BS, all of a sudden, that's where, <laughs> that's where things start to unravel for better or for worse. But you have to demonstrate that you're going to be standing on your own square and you're willing to walk away. I cannot tell you how many times me just walking away from people indicated an induced respect. It's almost like the times I decided not to respect people anymore is when they gave me the most respect. Whether it was a job, whether it was coworkers, whether it was family, or whether it was in relationships with women or even other men as well, but not so much. Men, I don't think really have that kind of issue. Like men, <laughs> men will recognize if a man is another man is capable of of doing physical damage and they'll respect him like it just is a male thing whereas women because of the way the laws are it's like they think that they can psychologically manipulate and not all women of course of course but women generally think that because because they can psychologically manipulate and abuse more because that's their form of aggression Right, male form of aggression is physical violence, whereas female female aggression is psychological manipulation. And women will out manipulate you every single time if you play the games. And so the best way to play the game with a woman as a man <laughs> is to not play the game. Like she can't play you. Nobody can play you if you're not playing the game itself. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't participate in the world. I'm not saying that you shouldn't live a life that is, that is worth it to you. But I'm just saying that playing games, when somebody's playing games, a man or a woman is playing games, the best way to get out of the games and the drama is to just not to play. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's transition here into the song.
Did they get you to trade your heroes for ghosts, hot ashes for trees, hot air for the cool breeze, cold comfort for change? Did you exchange? Wish you were here.